So before we even begin this tutorial, I should probably ask you a couple questions to see if you're even emotionally ready for this. Consider these your trigger warnings, okay? Uh, a. Are you afraid of spiders? Are you arachnophobic? B. If you see a bug or a spider or whatever in your room, do you call over somebody to take care of it instead of uh, doing it yourself? You just cower in the corner or something? And C. When I say the word spider or bug or beetle or centipede or locust, does it make your skin crawl? Well, if you answered yes to any of these, uh, maybe close out the video now because we are going to be seeing a whole lot of that and it's going to be hella fucking creepy, <laughs> okay? Uh, this is going to be the grossest tutorial I've ever done in Blender because I'm going to be talking about new add-on that came out, it's called SpiderFi, and it automates, you know, making bugs and bug systems that can follow shit, like in Harry Potter 2, you can have that, like, list, not list, a fucking a chain, a single file thing of spiders all going in one direction, and you can do swarms and stuff like this. I'm just gonna be explaining how this uh, add-on works, there's a link in the description if you are interested in anything uh, you see, and then I'm just gonna show you how to make a quick shot with it, uh, just so we can tie everything together. Okay, so SpiderFi, what the fuck is it? Well, SpiderFi is an add-on that uses void systems. If you don't know what that is, we'll talk about it. But it basically uses very fancy particles uh, to make kind semi-intelligent bugs, okay? So how do we do this? Well, first of all, uh, we need to pick what kind of thing we want. So I'm gonna start off by picking, okay, bird-eating spider, because apparently those exist, spiders that eat birds, I don't know. Bird-eating spider, select it. Second of all, we give a name to our particle system. I'm gonna call it spider with a Y. It's in theme, and then a bug amount, how many spiders or, and by the way, you can select multiple of these at the same time. How many of these do you want um, to spawn at once? So let's start with a low number, 50. Finally, we're gonna add a goal, which is to say uh, a goal, a objective, a thing that these bugs are gonna aim for and follow. Once you've done all this, add bug system. And uh, just like that, just gonna put the spawner higher, uh, we have, uh, we've created a, an abomination. So what this is going to do is it is going to spawn 50 spiders that are going to very loosely, and we can control this a bit later, uh, loosely follow this goal represented by the empty. If I move it over here, you're gonna see the general trend of some of the spiders at least, at least they have to be at least somewhat close, is going to be to reach this objective, this uh, this goal, right? Um, if you see that they are not following it that closely, or only some of them are if they're within a certain radius, uh, what you do, you select these. Again, it's a particle system. We go into the brain of this, which is physics, Boyd, um, Boyd brain, right? And we take the goal. In other words, what is their desire to go to this empty? You take it, you bring it up, and then you're going to see when we re-simulate, um, in some sense, they are really going to be following this, okay? Um, and every kind of particle system or every kind of bug system has different rules, right? Some of them want to follow something like a goal. Some of them want to separate, right? They don't want to be touching each other, so they kind of uh, make sure they each have a bubble around them. They flock, so they're not going to go too far away from each other. These are basic rules uh, that birds and bugs and shit like this follow, okay? So now we have a goal and a thing, and we can animate this in real time. Time, I guess, um, although sometimes it doesn't seem to work. And it, and it follows it, is the point. Uh, some other things we can do, I know what you're thinking, uh, all these spiders are identical. Uh, you can select the particle system, again, you can select any of these spiders. We're gonna go to render, and again, these are all just features I'm showing you so that when we do the shot, we can like make it real fucking quick, right? Uh, we can take render, uh, and since these are all particles, we can add uh, scale variations. So some of these spiders are gonna be bigger or smaller than others. Um, and we can also mess with uh, overall scale and stuff like this. Again, in the uh, Boyd brain and stuff like this, uh, we can affect, again, how, what's their desire to uh, follow an objective, to separate, also their movement, right? How fast can they spawn? If we make it one, uh, their maximum speed when they spawn in is gonna be five times as slow, uh, which might be what you want, depends if the spider's freaking out. Um, this is an abomination, <laughs> look at this. Um, and all this applies to uh, also flying stuff too. So I'm just gonna start a, a new project, just show you a couple more features and then we're gonna get going, okay? And the reason I'm starting a new project is it tends to be easier to just restart than to you know delete the collection and all this and make a new one. Um, so this time, let's make something with beetles and centipedes, 200, or again, we're gonna call it bugs. We're gonna add in a goal. And let's add in a bug system, and I can show you a couple more settings. So now this uh, particle system is gonna use a collection to spawn in multiple things, animated centipedes, beetles, these all come uh, textured and materialized, which of course looks better when you're in cycles and you have the HDRI. Let me just show you what that looks like. HDRI, ew. <laughs> um, and uh, let's, let's throw in some environment background. Boop, boop. And you can see we have uh, good looking beetles and stuff like this. So. 
Uh, we can really create uh, quite a few particle systems here. Um, if you want to kind of, uh, if you want to have very characteristic behavior, like maybe you want it to be going on hills and stuff like that, uh, you can do this too. Although I found in my experiments when I add in uh, collision objects, sometimes if there's like too much geometry going on, uh, it starts to get confused. So I'm just going to make a quick terrain, proportional editing, making some hills here that go up, some hills here that go down. You select this, you make it a collision object. So again, select. Uh, select a geometry to collision and now when we simulate you're going to see some of these kind of spawn in and out but generally uh, once they're there they can go up and down the hills so they kind of respect uh, that kind of thing any terrain okay at this point i think you have everything you need to know about this add-on right there really isn't too much going on here you just spawn a system maybe set a collision object and you done fine tune um, everything in the particle uh, settings by the way um, with the render settings and the physics and all this there's one more thing and that is the particle number uh, which which we can change on the fly. So if we want to re-simulate, but with like a quarter, you know, we set it to 50, now there'll be less uh, particles spawned in, okay? Um, in general, I wish uh, some of these particle settings were put in this menu so we wouldn't have to dive in there, but whatever. Um, first version of the add-on. So now that you know the basics, let's make a fucking terrifying shot. I already did some motion tracking, because, uh, you know, this isn't a motion tracking tutorial. I'm not going to spend like 20 minutes explaining how you track this. I have a bunch of tutorials on it. But this is just meant to uh, illustrate how do we make a shot with spiders or something like this. Well, uh, first of all, we go to SpiderFi. And again, all this is is, is it's a, a moving camera, right? That's what we have in our scene so far. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in, I, it could be any of these. I'm just going to pick bird eating spider because I like them more than the black widow that have the red mark on them, I think. Or maybe I have it the other way around. Uh, bird eating spider. We're going to call this the spider system. Have there be 200, although again, we can modify this on the fly. Uh, bugs, add a goal, add a bug system. And we don't need to do a collision plane or anything because by default, these things uh, spawn in uh, so that they um, fall immediately on the uh, ground like that. Okay. So I want it to all, I want these spiders to kind of spawn in on the floor and then they're kind of going this way towards the ladder like, oh, I want to ascend to heaven. I don't know what their motivation is. Either way, I'm going to have the particle system kind of go off uh, camera over here and we might have to move it again. So they kind of spawn in on the side here and then they start crawling over in this direction. Again, the reason they're already doing this, they have this goal and they're uh, meant to follow it. And I'm going to put it all the way over there. So that's where they want to go. A couple things to make this better. I already want there to be some spiders in the shot, and they want to be, and I want them to be smaller and stuff like this um, before that. Before we even start panning over, okay? To do this, select your particle system. We're gonna go here. First of all, I want there to be maybe more spiders. So I'm gonna up that. Second of all, the start and end point, like any particle system, right? When should these particles be emitting? Uh, you can actually, for your start frame, put in a negative number. So even before we begin, there have been 200 frames that have elapsed. Uh, this way we already have spiders in here. I also want them to be a bit slower. So again, physics, Boyd's movement, we make their max speed something like two. So now they've already spawned, but they're not gonna move as quickly, okay? Cool. Um, now, a couple other things. We want to prevent them from flocking super far away, right, and going into this trash can and intersecting with this uh, geometry. And even though this isn't something I can control like very directly, there are loose things we can do, right? So in the Boyd brain, we make the goal uh, slightly more desirable. So maybe they're gonna flock, or they're gonna flock a little bit less. And also another way to control this: you take the flocking um, and you bring it down. Although. Although I do think uh, the way this works is um, all these uh, parameters use the same rule fuzziness, in other words, the same uh, strength or magnitude or whatever, uh, but the order these are in, so right now it's still gonna, let's re-simulate, uh, it's still gonna do it a tiny bit, it's gonna be a bit better, uh, but the order that these rules are ordered in, I think matters. So if we put goal on the top, I think they are, first of all, gonna be going towards the goal, there you go and then they're gonna separate and then they're gonna flock. It's kind of like an order of operations, right? If we put goal on the bottom, it's gonna be less of a priority and you see they kind of just don't fucking care. And, and that might be what you want as well. Uh, you can play around with this, okay? So we have this, uh, let's make these things look a bit smaller and more realistic. So again, we go to, we go to render. This is gonna be affecting our particles, which again, are animated meshes. It's a thing that can happen uh, no matter how much you don't want it to, <laughs> to be able to happen. Uh, you take scale, you bring it down. Luckily the origins are on the bottom, so they're gonna scale down there. Uh, let's add some variation. And now we have a nice uh, little spider system. 
that's already existing uh, before we even do this because again we have a negative uh, frame number so at this point you can really start messing around with settings you can animate the goal stuff like this but assuming that this is what you want i don't know if it is but assuming uh, you go to cache and then you bake it and you're thinking oh can you really bake a particle system with voids and stuff like that sure now all this uh, motion is baked in which i believe if cache exists maybe i'll disprove myself i think even if i move this they're still going to spawn from there, right? Because it's all baked in. If you want to modify anything, you can always delete the bake. And now uh, if we move it, it actually matters, right? You can see. Um, by the way, one more thing, the emitter doesn't have to be a square. You can make it a long rectangle. So they're going to emit uh, from more varied uh, locations, or you could have like multiple geometry emitters and stuff like this. But uh, you do what you do, you you do what you want. Um, so I'm just going to re uh, do these uh, settings. And again, maybe I'll start it a bit earlier, minus 250. I already want there to be some spiders here. Okay, uh, let's bake this in. We're happy with our particle system, and now let's make it look uh, kind of decent. So if we were to go to rendered mode, what do we see with uh, cycles? Uh, we see a bunch of tiny little spider boys that kind of look good, uh, but there's no shadows, there's no nothing, right? Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, uh, film, uh, transparent. Uh, this is just so if we add an NHDRI, we're not going to see it in the background, right? So right now we have a transparent background. Um, next thing, let's go to GPU. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a shadow catcher for the ground, and we'll make it a fancy one. So this will be a shadow catcher. So you go to visibility, and then you go to shadow catcher. So now uh, this is a floor that they're going on, but there's also a tiny bit of shadow. It's transparent except for this a tiny uh, little shadow. We can add in a bit of lighting, and then a, actually, you know what? Let's make it a fancy shadow catcher first. Go to shading. Um, even though this is invisible, uh, the shadow catcher, any material that we give this thing uh, still matters. What do I mean by this? So uh, if I go to principal BSDF, we are getting in the weeds here uh, and replace it with the mission, right? I'm going to replace this with the mission. You can see that again, it's a shadow catcher. You can't see, but now there's light illuminating from below uh, using whatever color I want it to be. So this uh, BSDF information or whatever still matters. So principal BSDF, the idea is I'm going to use the uh, footage uh, to kind of reflect the floor texture back on the spider, uh, which should be uh, the right way to do things. So image texture, I save this as a sequence. Um, if you do a tracking thing, then you'll have that too. Auto refresh, and then for the coordinates, we use windowed coordinates. What does this mean? Uh, what it means, and we can look at this through a look dev mode, what this means is we are going to be projecting the video onto the floor uh, from the perspective of the camera. That's what windowed coordinates means through this window of the camera, and that's going to update every frame with auto refresh. Um, in other words, and let's bring up the roughness. Um, in other words, we have a BSDF reflecting the floor back up so that when we go to uh, cycles, rendered mode, it's just going to look a bit more realistic. We have some light coming from below. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that already looks pretty good. Uh, last thing I would do is I would add in a light from above uh, just so we can really control the uh, lighting and shadows and all of this, okay? So light, boom, make it like 100, I don't know, anything that will make the uh, shadows super intense. And you can see they are super intense. In fact, uh, maybe too intense, so you can bring up the uh, radius a bit like that, okay? Cool, so now any frame we are on is gonna have our little freaky spider system that again could be beetles, it could be anything. You can animate the void brain and let's see what a render looks like. Good thing is since they're so tiny, renders don't take that long and they don't need to be that precise either. Okay, we have a spider system. Let's put it over the floor. Render layers, we wanna view it. So right now all we have is the render layers, what we got from the viewport. We just wanna slap it over some footage. So either do this via movie clip or not bokeh image. <laughs> Uh, image sequence, which we can use the image node for. We've already imported this, so it should be somewhere here, yes. And then we alpha over. In other words, we're putting one thing over the other. And we're gonna, we're gonna uh, re-render this so everything works. Or actually, I guess we don't need to re-render it. We just need to make it so that this image sequence uses all the frames. There we go. Um, and now you can see we have one thing over the other. Uh, some things that I do to uh, make this look a bit more realistic and blend, blend it together, uh, we can affect the gamma of only the render layers, in other words, only the uh, spider. At least it should be only the spider. Put this right here. Uh, this gamma should affect, I'm just gonna re-render this just in case it matters. Uh, that gamma is only gonna affect that part of the chain. What do I mean by this? By the way, we should be in standard. Um, it means that if we double this, it's only going to make the uh, spiders darker. So one, two. Um, I think I want them to be just slightly darker. So 1.2, um, slightly blurred because it seems like my footage isn't like super in focus. Add in a tiny bit of blur 
And uh, finally, I think what I did is uh, for the version I showed you, I don't know if I ended up uh, falling through with this, black and white, uh, just so it's a bit creepier and also a bit more realistic, but really just so it's creepier. That, and then also a bit of uh, contrast, which we could either do through a look uh, contrast or uh, just up the contrast here. There you go. Um, so if you render this as a video, you're gonna get a little spider scene, but again, that's not the point. I just wanted to uh, show how this add-on works. I wanted to uh, <laughs> just make a little demo scene and all of that. So uh, if you wanna get this add-on for yourself, of course, I do have an affiliate link in the description. Uh, feel free to use that if you care, but uh, this is kind of a unique add-on in the sense that you're not gonna find anything cre creepier on the blender market, okay? Um, I, I assume that in the future they're gonna add in more bugs and stuff like this and maybe take some of those particle settings and put it in the menu. Uh, that's my honest take, that's what could be improved, but as for what it is now, it is a super good one-click roughly uh, solution uh, to make a particle system. So there you go, link in the description if you care and that's uh, how we make uh, this shot. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is the part of it where I uh, put all my hopes and dreams on the right. You're just kidding, it's a list of patrons, I gotcha. Uh, we have something like 680, 690? I don't know, it keeps uh, increasing now. Uh, so I wanna say thank you to all these uh, patrons that we have now. So I always put you guys in the credits because you're essentially producing these. Uh, why are people becoming patrons? Well, first of all, they get benefits, right? And that, that that's not first of all, that's the main thing, right? Uh, they get one files that I upload. I'll see if I can upload this one. I need to see the licensing of can I upload something that uses the particle system of another add-on. I'm not sure about that, uh, but in general, they get one files. There are a couple hundred now. You just fucking become a patron and you get access to everything right off the bat, even on your first month. Um, also exclusive tutorials, um, if you're at a higher tier uh, that are not posted on the CG Matter or Default Cube channels. I recently released a, I think it was a five part, it's pretty long, a five part tutorial on that mustache effect from the CG Matter video. Uh, we go in detail about the tracking, the simulating, the hair systems, everything. Thing. So all that is a, a tutorial series that already exists, and of course there's others from the past, you can watch all of them at one go. Um, also Discord access, um, early access sometimes if I record a bit early, and um, behind the scenes, stuff like that. So if any of this interests you, head over to Patreon, Patreon. you would be a patron, Patreon, um, and uh, all that exists over there. Anyways, thanks for watching, Spiderfy, it's creepy, and now, now it's over.